Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. For premium picks, look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, this weekend, after the Canelo, Alfredo Angulo fight, I made a post-fight video. And I gave my comments on what I thought about the fight. I had some critical comments to say about Saul Alvarez, who won the fight, right? Understand what this website is about is to break down and analyze fighters, offer takes on both their strengths and weaknesses, right? We're trying to get an edge on the casino. So we're trying to figure out here what's really going on with the fighter right this is not a fan club page I'm not here trying to sell you boxing tickets or to convince you that these fighters are supermen and that you should run and purchase merchandise or whatever related to the fighters right I'm not a promoter I'm not a manager I'm just a guy here online who's a boxing fan trying to get an edge on the casino Right, so sometimes my point of view surprises some people, especially when I'm talking about some of the most popular fighters in the sport. Right, um, about 18 months ago, I made some comments about Manny Pacquiao that seemed to stir up uh, a whole range of emotions in the comment section to those videos. Um, all I can say is I'm going to continue to try to critique fighters. The point is you need to spot fighters who are underrated. You also need to spot fighters who are overrated and who, quite frankly, look like they are headed for tough times. Now, Saul Alvarez is one such fighter. Right, I think Alvarez is headed for tough times. Now, this is not to say that he's not a world-class fighter. This is not to say that he doesn't have the heart of a lion. This is not to say that he hasn't challenged himself in fighting opponents like Floyd Mayweather, like Alfredo Angulo like Austin Trout, like Miguel Vasquez, right? He's not a coddled fighter. He, he actually has gone out and fought big competition. Nor is this a lament about the way Saul Alvarez got his first world title, right? Rather, this is just straight commentary on where he is right now in the sport and the challenges he faces. Now what I want you to do is I want you to actually challenge the current thought, current public thought, and actually look up some of the videos that I'm going to mention here. Because I think they're eye-opening and I want you to do some Google searches on what I'm going to talk about. The first is that Saul Alvarez is shorter than Floyd Mayweather. Forget the published heights, okay? We're not here trying to get fooled by marketing or to even try to believe in marketing. Understand, we're trying to get an edge on the casino, not follow the casino. What I want you to do is I want you to look at the weigh-in for Canelo against Floyd Mayweather. I believe Canelo is 5'7 and a half. Perhaps he's 5'8. Now why does that matter? It's because Canelo can no longer make weight at 154. He wants to fight at middleweight, right? The question you need to ask yourself, in my opinion, 
is whether Canelo would be a big middleweight or a small middleweight. Right, given that Canelo fights in a flat footed style, right, and given that Canelo's foot speed isn't that great, right, he's not moving around the ring like Miguel Vasquez, right, he's not moving around the ring like Sergio Martinez. This is a guy with a flat footed boxing style who's not that big so given all of his success to date right let's imagine him at 160 right is he big enough to fight his style a flat-footed style against Janady Golovkin. Let me go one step further. Right? There are other guys in the 154-160 area code who are physically much bigger than Canelo and who know how to use lance and who also are, in my opinion, better defensively than Canelo. Let me ask a question. Does Canelo have the size and the volume to deal with the length and the defense of Anthony Mundine? Right? The problem with moving up in weight class is you're not just fighting guys who are heavier you're actually fighting guys with different dimensions right I believe there are a host of people who he is gonna be heading in the direction of who quite frankly have physical attributes and skill sets that are going to give him a lot of trouble. Right, let me say this too. The issue on whether Canelo can control distance in the ring is paramount if you believe that he's about to fight in a division where he's going to be small. Right? If he cannot control distance, if bigger men, let's say Janady Golovkin, who's physically bigger than Canelo, by the way, here's the first thing I want you to do. I want you to Google the Golovkin Saul Alvarez sparring session. These guys have actually been in the ring together. I believe it happened in Big Bear. There are actually reports here online about what happened in the ring, right? Understand if there's secrets about a guy's size, his height, how big he really is, right? Those secrets no longer exist when the opponent has already seen you in the ring. Golovkin knows exactly how big Canelo is. If you Google that article, you're going to find out that, let's just be charitable, Golovkin more than held his own against Canelo in the ring. Right? When you saw the Alfredo Angulo fight, and keep in mind, Angulo wasn't at his best. You had Arislandi Lara ringside, who had just fought Angulo who was surprised at how bad Angulo looked. You had, you know, Marquez doing golpe a golpe in Mexico, watching the fight as it happened, wondering what was going on with Angulo. Right now, Angulo wasn't at his best against Saul Alvarez. 
But yet, Angulo, in my opinion, was backing up Saul Alvarez. Right? Alvarez was up against the ropes in several of the rounds. Now, just indulge me here. <clears throat> if he would be a 5'8", middleweight, we'll give him a half an inch. Right? If he's a 5'8", middleweight, who can be backed up against the ropes, you need to ask yourself, what happens when he's in against a bigger man like Peter Quillen or Janady Golovkin? Right? Now, I'm not a member of the Peter Quillen fan club. Longtime viewers here know I'm a skeptic on Peter Quillen. But, Quita, but Peter Quillen hits hard for 160. And he's physically much bigger than Canelo. Right? And so all I'm saying is since Canelo is really flat-footed, he's not up on the balls of his feet. How's Canelo going to deal with Quillen's reach? And since Canelo drops his hands at times, you saw that clearly in the later rounds of the Angulo fight. What happens if he drops his hands and he gets hit by some Peter Quillen haymakers? Right? So, my point is this. Look at the size. Right? Understand, too, Canelo isn't a Joe Fraser type. He's not, he's not a Mike Tyson type, young Tyson, where other men are taller than them. But the shorter man's using it to his advantage by actually crouching low, bending at the waist, then coming in low at angles. I view Canelo... And you tell me if I'm wrong. As not a bobber like Joe Fraser, but a guy who stands really more upright. A guy who sees himself as a jabber. Right? I believe Canelo sees himself as a Vladimir Klitschko type. Now that works for Klitschko because Klitschko is tall for a heavyweight. So he's hitting you with a jab and he's leaning. Right? It's hard to find him in the ring because he's tall and he has a reach advantage in many fights. Canelo seems to have a Mike Tyson type body while trying to do a Vladimir Klitschko type style. Right? It's a little bit different. Right? Against bigger men looking to exchange. That could be a problem. Right? Let me also say this too. The Mayweather weigh in, and I believe in looking at weigh ins, they tell you a lot. The Mayweather weigh in, and I've mentioned this before. Is significant because as you look at that weigh in, it, it was for a catch weight of 152 or something like that. Double check me on it. But when you looked at the weigh in, you know, Floyd Mayweather looked like Floyd Mayweather. Saul Alvarez looked like a weight drained version of himself. Right? He's. Didn't even look like Saul Alvarez. Look at his neck. It's so thin. Folks, that's not all two pounds. Blow weight. Right? That's not two pounds below weight. Right? His neck's drained. Understand, he's been keeping himself artificially light. He's been fighting, quite frankly, in divisions below where he should have been fighting. Now, we saw this recently with Adrian Broner. You remember, Adrian Broner had a fight where he missed the weight 
by a wide margin. Right? Adrian Broner moved up to welterweight because he couldn't make the lighter weights. Right? He was pretending at a moment there that he was Johan Guzman showing up to a weigh-in several pounds overweight. Right? Had to pay his opponent money to fight at the new weight. So, of course, not surprisingly, Broner then moves up to 147. Won the title at 147. You saw his last fight at 147 against Marcus Maidana. How did that work out? Right? The point is simply, a lot of these guys in boxing look great at weights that they're making by starving themselves. When they start eating full meals and they actually rehydrate, then they move up to their proper weight classes. Sometimes the train gets off the rails. Adrian Broner is not a big puncher at 147. How do we know Saul Alvarez is going to be a big puncher at 160. Adrian Broner had to pay an opponent money for the opponent to accept a last-minute weight fluctuation in a contract because Broner couldn't make weight. The storm clouds are out. Canelo just paid Alfredo Angulo $100,000 because he couldn't make 154. So we know he's going to 160. We know that. If he is 5'8", is he ready for 160? Let's go one step further. Indulge me on this. Right, I've talked about the Mayweather-Canelo weigh-in. How Canelo looked. Canelo's height. Right? I've talked about the Angulo fight. How Angulo backs him up to the ropes several times in that fight. Right? Several times. Now what I want you to do is to look at the Austin Trout copy box numbers. Right? All I'm saying is this. Canelo has gone through a series of fights. Now, I'm referring you to a fight that he won, right? He's gone through a series of fights where his volume hasn't been there. He hasn't been fighting three-minute rounds. He simply hasn't been, right? He fights in spurts, so much so. That in some of the same rounds in which he looks explosive against Alfredo Angulo, at different times in that round, he's up against the ropes, and I don't believe it's by design. I didn't get the feeling I was watching Ali leading Foreman over to the ropes. I didn't get the feeling I was watching Floyd leading countless men over to the ropes. I got the feeling I was watching a young guy who was episodic, who would empty the gun and then would be tired, would need to rest, would find himself up against the ropes. That's very different, right? I didn't get the feeling that Canelo was over by the ropes for strategic purposes. I got the feeling he was over by the ropes for fatigue, right? The Austin Trout numbers are eye-opening. Now keep in mind, Canelo won that fight. Look at the disparity in activity. Now, what I want you to do, again, we're talking 160. Let me talk about another opponent for him. A guy who was the champion and then lost his belt in a fight in which the only knockdown scored was one he did to his opponent. And that's Daniel Gill. Now, Daniel Gill is high volume. He's coming at you. He's throwing combinations. He keeps you working. 
if you're not ready to work, you're going to have problems. Now, how is Canelo's level of volume going to deal with a bigger man with more volume who has lived in the middleweight division? Understand, Daniel Gill has been in the ring with Mundine. He's been in the ring with Darren Barker, right? He's been in the ring with Roman Karmazin. Now, maybe those names aren't as well known as Saul Alvarez's to the boxing public. But if you're into the sport of boxing, you know the guys I've just named are serious boxers. Right? In a fight between Saul Alvarez and Daniel Gill, I'll tell you what. Gill's going to throw more volume. Gill moves better than Saul Alvarez. Right? Forget public opinion. We're just going off fight styles. How is Alvarez going to be able to deal with Daniel Gill? I get the feeling that if Alvarez makes it to middleweight, it's going to be tough for him against a host of opponents. Right? Golovkin... Mundine, uh, I know Mundine has also fought at 154, but I'm just saying, you know, I'm guessing there are a lot of these fighters who if you said to them, here's a shot at Saul Alvarez at 160, do you want it? I get the feeling there are a lot of guys who would take that fight. There are a lot of guys who, quite frankly, would believe that they're going to win that fight. Now, I'm reading online that supposedly I have sour grapes because Saul Alvarez is doing well. All I can say is, folks, that's ridiculous. Alvarez delivered for me in this fight. Understand, my prop was Saul Alvarez to win by KO, hedged with Angulo by KO. Right? If either guy got the KO, then I did all right. Let me say, I've been following Alvarez's career for years. You know that here online. Because I first started making videos about Saul Alvarez when he was 19 years old. And in fact, if you go back to those early videos, you'll find that I was very excited about Saul Alvarez, perhaps too excited about Saul Alvarez before he won his first title. Right? I wish Saul Alvarez nothing but the best. I view Saul Alvarez as great for boxing. He's bringing in a lot of fans. Right? But, you should be concerned about the fact that in his early 20s, this guy's having weight problems. In his early 20s, this guy's having volume problems. He's having stamina problems. You should just look around and ask yourself how many 5-8 middleweights fight this style and have been very successful, right? You know, all I'm saying is he's small for a middleweight, right? Defensively. As I said yesterday, and I know a lot of people disagreed with me, his defense is such that when the Angulo fight was stopped, fans booed. As Canelo left the ring, fans threw things at him. They thought Angulo still had a chance in the fight. The people watching the fight in the arena thought the fight was still competitive. Understand, if they thought the fight was uncompetitive, no one would boo. Right? They thought Canelo was getting hit with something. If you go back and watch the fight, I believe Angulo clearly wins the eighth round. Right? The feeling, at least the folklore, 
is that Angulo, who was behind on the judges' scorecards, still had a chance to win the fight. Right? Think about it. And so, I'm not sure exactly what Canelo can do. He's not going to grow anymore. He's 23. He's 5'8". He is his height. Right? In terms of volume, I found that temperament and volume are some of the hardest things to change in life. Right? You know, guys who don't throw a lot of punches, they're not going to suddenly ramp it up and throw a hundred punches around. They're not going to suddenly become Manny Pacquiao. That's not the way the human wiring is. Right? It's simply not. What folks need to realize, too, is as you look at an opponent like Alfredo Angulo, let's be charitable. His defense is not Anthony Mundine level. His defense is not Janady Golovkin level. Dare I say his defense is not Peter Quillen level. Aren't these the guys in Canelo's future if we're talking about 160? So yeah, I'm here online and you know what? I encourage all of the comments, positive and negative. I understand. That boxing is a sport where when you touch the third rail, if you say anything critical of certain fighters, Manny Pacquiao, um, I know that firsthand, <laughs> right? Uh, Saul Alvarez, okay, there's going to be blowback. Fair enough, right? I appreciate the comments to the Canelo fans. I hope you continue to leave them. But if you're trying to get an edge on the casino, you have to think about how a guy looks at a weigh-in. You got to think about the guy's size. You got to think about the fact that the guy has been in slugfests, right? That Jose Cito Lopez Canelo fight, right? Now, I picked Canelo in that fight. Canelo delivered in that fight for me. But didn't he get hit with a bunch of shots? Hasn't Canelo been in some shootouts? Miguel Cotto's older brother fought Canelo. Here's another film I want you to look at. Look at the first round of that fight. Isn't Canelo getting hit with a bunch of shots? Can you get hit like that? By Janady Golovkin. And survive? Right? These are the questions that have to be asked. Sometimes when you're analyzing fights, you have to think about them before they're even announced. I'm just here to tell you, Canelo's going to have some tough times at 160 pounds. He better hope that Miguel Cotto beats Sergio Martinez. Cotto is smaller. He's small for a middleweight. Right? But... Right? Let me say this. Understand. Cotto, for all of his inside game, right? and he has a great inside game, but understand that Cotto moves very well. Cotto has a gear where he's able to move around the ring. Look at the Delvin Rodriguez fight. Cotto can move. Right? If Cotto were to fight Canelo, I'm not here making a prediction on that fight. I haven't looked at enough film. But if Cotto were to fight Canelo and were to start moving around the ring, what would Canelo's response be? Because understand, Cotto's really a switch. He can come in and destroy you on the inside, especially when he's throwing that short left hook. But then he could also have fights like his Alfredo Gomez fight where he's on his back foot boxing you right keep in mind Cotto like Canelo has come up from the lower weights right so he's not he's not Janady Golovkin size wise right but 
given that Koto can move a bit, right, move more than Canelo, wouldn't Canelo have some problems? Just compare and contrast their common opponent, right? Cotto fought Mayweather. That's probably the closest fight Mayweather has had in several years, right? Cotto even dinged Mayweather. I think Mayweather had a puffed up nose or something at the end of that fight, right? Mayweather looked like he had been in a fight after fighting Cotto. Mayweather, by contrast, in fighting Canelo, we knew that fight was over early, didn't we? Mayweather looked like he had a gym workout. Didn't even look like he'd been in a fight. Mayweather's face unmarked to the point where it looked like Mayweather had just shaved. Right? So, think it through. I think Canelo is going to have some problems. Thanks for stopping by.